Saturday journey is mindfulness 24 by 7. From moment to moment, we think, speak, and act in mindfulness. And uh, we are learning from one of the great masters who lived almost eight to nine hundred years ago from today. And, uh, and very good. And this 900 years ago, this master declared that knowledge alone leads to awakening. Knowledge alone leads to awakening. So who can receive, retain and realize this knowledge? Who is a seeker? So as long as we are becoming a seeker, we need to do some practices to purify the mind, huh? to remove the distractions. So once we have a one-pointed awareness and attention to receive this knowledge, we can be in the state of 24 by 7 mindfulness. Why? The master says that the mind has to be ready. So what is do you mean by being ready? It is ready means your mind is ready to receive the knowledge, retain the knowledge. So when you receive and retain the knowledge, you realize it. You are listening to me and your mind goes back to your honey, then you are not receiving the knowledge. Or your mind goes back to the past memories. It is because of the impurities of the mind. So, now coming to the main topic, we have been understanding. Do you all remember the four stages of a metaphor? So now he is introducing uh, one metaphor in the same metaphor. And that makes, and when you are aware of that metaphor with reference to your mind and the real self, you are here and now. But we should know that the mind knowledge is realized in stages. The seed does not become a tree overnight. Let me give an example of this metaphor uh, in a very simple explanation. How come my mind knows you are Stephen, you are Sam? Consciousness is a must. <clears throat> if the consciousness is not there, uh, I, I can't say, I cannot express, I, I cannot say that I know Stephen. So again, go back. I see Stephen through the sense organs. Now I'm just seeing everyone, but this is an example. So don't get upset that I don't see you. So, so I am seeing everyone. Everyone is beautiful and handsome. So I see you through the senses. Senses becomes the seer. But without information from the subtle body that is mine, I cannot recognize the name in the form of a Stephen. You see the metaphor? I'm explaining the world outside is perceived by the sense organs. But without the mind, I cannot recognize a particular name in the form. So today I see the Stephen. Does it mean that my mind has to repeat all the time, Stephen, 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 constantly, constantly, and then I come in front of the Stephen, I recognize? No, there is a third level. 
where the information is stored. Causal. See that. Okay. So the three levels are done. To recognize, to be conscious in our life, we have to, these three levels are a must. Clear? Otherwise, I will recognize Stephen as a Sam, Sam as a Stephen, uh, Stephen as a Brandy. So that information, that knowledge is there. But what we forget, we forget the consciousness. Without consciousness, these three levels are totally useless. Consciousness goes to the causal, triggers the mind, the second level, the consciousness goes to the mind, the mind lends its secondary consciousness to the sense organ, so I recognize Stephen. Why I gave this example? To get the knowledge, to get the knowledge. <coughs> consciousness is the ultimate cause. We forget the consciousness. So that is why this metaphor is created. In any activity, in any knowledge, these four stages has to be there. Consciousness is not present in the mind means you are in deep sleep. How can you recognize? There is no knowledge. Knowledge is sleeping. Eyes are not working. Metaphor. I'm going slowly, but pay attention. You all are seekers, so So what happens? Now, a little technical aspect, matter. I see the matter, I don't see the consciousness. Consciousness is hidden in it, but it does not have a proper instrument. The very first instrument we need a life. So matter plus life gives the sensation and the sensation tells me, yes, it indicates a consciousness. But the sensation alone is not enough. Matter plus life, that is plant kingdom. It's a process of evolution. Matter plus life plus consciousness now. That consciousness appears as an animal mind. So we have an animal kingdom. But I told you that animal kingdom have a chip. And that chip, you, the animals cannot control. So we have a next level of evolution, matter plus life plus consciousness plus self-consciousness. My intellect is free to observe, to choose. That is also because if the consciousness is not present, nothing is possible. And the ultimate Matter plus life plus consciousness plus self-consciousness plus ananda, the pure happiness. That is what we say the real self or the God or the supreme consciousness. Understood? Good. Say yes. So now go to the canvas. Canvas real self, pure consciousness. I have repeated again and again. I believe you still understand. Uh, you, you have that information? Yes. Real self, pure canvas. Starch canvas is the causal, the innermost self. Then we have the blueprint, the sketching, is the, done by the mind. <coughs> and then the painted canvas, the word uh, we have a painting. Painting on a canvas. Right? 
So now on that canvas, there is a painting of Sam, there is a painting of Stephen, Brandy, you, me, Samir. Then we have trees, then we have mountains, we have rivers. I had a friend in India and uh, so when I went to his house, he said, you know, he brought that picture. Now here are my parents, you know, my mom and my dad. And then he started crying. I said, why you are crying? You are telling me that this is your parents. No, no, these are the images of my parents. This is what happens. This is what happens in delusion. Do you see? We all, we all say, oh, this is me. Where? In the painting or in the picture. Don't we see that? Say, yes, we all, oh, we all see. This is me, this is my mom, this is my dad. <laughs> oh, you're there? No, no, I'm not there, I'm here. That is an image. So what happens that one canvas represents many in a painting. The fourth stage, what canvas is still one, but we see many, the same way the TV screen is one, but we see villain, actor, actresses, crime, violence, everything. Do you see that? That is the nature of the world. The screen is one, consciousness is one. <coughs> now magic has yet to come. Metaphor in the metaphor. I'll ask you a question and uh, uh, you have to answer it to yourself. So now just imagine or visualize in the painting we all are there. Right? So the trees, the mountains, trees, mountains, uh, river, are not wearing the clothes, the dress, but we all are wearing clothes. Metaphor in a metaphor. Clear? You are looking at the painting. Look at, Randy is wearing a beautiful clothes, so does Stephen, so does Sam. But behind that, the wall is not. Clear? Canvas is only one. I'm going slowly so that you will be able to pick up. Canvas remains canvas. So one is, there is one main cloth that is canvas. And then we have many clothes that we all are wearing. Clear? Clear. Ah, in a painting. The entire journey, once you pick up, that's why I have been talking about these four stages of the canvas. Ah, that is the nature of the world. The fourth stage is nothing but the world of many, of high and low, of inert and living beings, of animals and the human beings. But here, in a painting, we see many human beings wearing different clothes, having different colors, having different shapes, having different sizes. Clear? Painter paints us 
painter has painted the, so the existence has created multiple world of name and the form my question does the painter or the existence add the color to the basic original cloth that is canvas or the secondary superficial cloth did you understand let me make it clear again brandy is wearing yellow mm, brownish uh, so 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 tell me the painter has painted yellow on the original canvas or the sketching he made of a brandy there he put the color that is our secondary cloth did you understand the question Painter is putting the color to the apparent cloth where the sketching of the brandy or the Stephen was done. If you say the painter has painted the color on the entire canvas, then he should have put all the color in the same canvas, the yellow color on the entire canvas. So in his mind, huh? in his mind, pay attention here, in his mind, he visualized what he visualized, he visualized Brandy or a Stephen or a me, and then he put the color on the apparent secondary cloth am i clear from where the entire journey will start he selected a certain area in the canvas huh? <coughs> to create a painting of stephen and then he colored it so my question is, did he color on the original canvas or did he color on the apparent or the secondary cloth that he visualized in his mind? He painted on the apparent cloth that he visualized in his mind. He did not color it on the original cloth. There is no painting with the cake. You see that? So, yes. So, there are now two cloths. One is original canvas and the second is imaginary cloth. That imaginary cloth is known as the reflected consciousness or a secondary consciousness. It is that secondary consciousness which is Girish. Secondary consciousness is Stephen. Secondary consciousness is Brandy. But it is the same original consciousness. I'll pick up again and again once you pick up this metaphor in a metaphor. This mind is the secondary cloth. Original consciousness is the canvas, the pure consciousness. That is why we say 
the mind borrows the consciousness from the real self and claims, look at me, I am. Look at me, I'm Brandy, I'm Stephen, I'm Sam. But the fact is that it is still imaginary. It is still imaginary. So because it is imaginary, we name it as either you say secondary consciousness or reflected consciousness. That reflected consciousness is the is the mind. So it is the mind that says I'm different from you. You are different from me. I see the multiple worlds. Fact is. Fact is. Fact is. Practice thinker. You, we cannot separate the secondary consciousness from the pure consciousness. Do you see that? We cannot separate it. Because that imaginary, that false, that secondary consciousness cannot exist without the pure. The entire painting is done on the canvas. You cannot separate the canvas from. Do you get it? We started with the first metaphor, pure consciousness equated to the canvas. Then we have a causal, causal body, in terms of the canvas, it is starts, it is stiffened, so there is a creative impulse. Then it, then the third stage is the subtle body, the mind, and the fourth on the, you have the sketching done. Uh, in the mind, you visualize something. Uh, I have to go to Walgreens. How far it is? Ten miles. The mind visualizes. You see? And then you translate that into an action the same way the fourth stage is depending. But now in a metaphor, in a metaphor. So he uses the metaphor with the clothes. The human beings are wearing different colored clothes. So question is, does he color on the original canvas or does he color on the area visualized by his mind, visualized by his mind. It is imaginary, it is the same original consciousness. But through the imagination, it becomes the secondary consciousness and that is the mind. It is also known as reflected consciousness. It is also known as secondary consciousness it is also known as the mind. For the sake of understanding, one original pure consciousness and the one that perceives the difference that perceives the world is different and multiple is the mind. But mind cannot be separated from the pure consciousness. Why it cannot be separated? Because mind is a matter and inner. It borrows the consciousness from the real self. then only the mind becomes conscious. Otherwise, there is no way. So we have a proof in deep sleep. Mind is totally unconsciousness. So that very consciousness is not there. Consciousness is there, but it has not been taken away. 
taken by the mind at that moment. That is one proof. Do you all know discernment? Yes, I know. So discern between the pure consciousness and the imaginary, the secondary consciousness, you are there, you are in mindfulness 24 by 7. What do you see? <coughs> It takes time. Knowledge is realized in stages. So if you are paying attention, you are committed, you are ready to receive, retain the knowledge. Not in just as a casual, let me attend the session. Now, your commitment to yourself is required. So are you very much clear? The secondary consciousness is the mind. Original consciousness is the real self and that original consciousness cannot be separated from the secondary consciousness painting. Your painting on, on the canvas cannot be separated. It is already there, without which we do not exist. Another point that is very important. We don't see the two cloths. You don't see the two cloths. You only see the canvas. But they are overlapping. The mind is overlapping with the pure consciousness. Or you can say the mental consciousness is overlapping with the pure consciousness. We cannot separate them physically. We do it in the mind. How? By discernment. One is the basic cloth. Huh? One is the basic cloth. And the second are multicolored cloth. Superficial or the secondary consciousness, that is the mind, gets many colors. That is why individual mind is different. Do you see? The answer, you get the right answer of each and every doubt. But still, we do not see the two cloths. That is the confusion, has to be removed by the knowledge. There are not two cloths, there are not two consciousness. So normally in our day-to-day -day conversation, we talk my mind, my mental consciousness. No! It is imaginary. We cannot separate them physically. We have to separate them internally in the mind. How? By discernment. That is why the importance of the discernment is there. That secondary consciousness says, I am listening to you from my home. But there is only one canvas. <laughs> Did you get it, what I said? That location, that time, that shape, that color is framed by the secondary consciousness that is overlapping. That is why you say you are listening to me from the luxury of your home. Fact is that there is only one consciousness. Did you get it? That is why I gave a lot of lessons on this metaphor. So means what? Stephen is apparent, Girish is apparent, 
Vaibhav is apparent, Brandy is apparent, apparent, secondary. I imagine that I am different from you, but the fact is that it is overlapping. It is causing the confusion. It is, I am living in ignorance. How dare you say that you are different from me? I am different from you. You find one difference, you have multiple differences and from one confusion to the second confusion to the multiple confusion, I'm smarter than you, I'm intelligent than you, my height is, uh, I'm taller than you, I'm shorter than you, I have different colors, I have my IQ is this, my profession is this, all are painting on the same canvas canvas is one. We live with the secondary consciousness with the multiplicity of the world. Mind divides and perceives. It causes the confusion and the delusion. Think. Contemplate. Listening, you become aware and you are there. But it does not mean that you will be there. So if you claim that I'm already there, the same mind, the same superficial secondary consciousness has taken over you. It has created an ego and ego says, I'm already there. Where are you? So I have a lot of stress. That is why we say knowledge is realized in stages. No, no, I have understood. We are not talking of the IQ. Painting. The last point, fourth stage, we all are there in the painting, the trees are there, the mountains are there. So again, I'm asking the same question. You have, you are wearing a particular cloth. Canvas is the original cloth. So did the painter colors the, in, basic original cloth or the cloth visualized in his mind, visualized in his mind. That visualization is imaginary. That's why we have a painting of Stephen Weber in all of us. So in the mind we have two cloths, one is original, one is superficial, one is pure consciousness, one is secondary consciousness. But the fact is that mind cannot, does not, is not conscious, it's a matter. So it borrows the consciousness from the real self. So the mind cannot be separated from the pure consciousness. But the mind has a confusion that this is, but overlapping, confusion, ignorance, impurity, delusion, all are the words used in the different ways to explain. Look at the genius of this master. He brought the entire journey of the Eastern wisdom on this metaphor. Close your eyes. You see, close your eyes. The mind 
secondary consciousness recognizes the eyes at a particular place in a painting. Behind it, it is consciousness. Now I'm translating. <coughs> translating the same <coughs> principle that we discussed into a non-practice. Where I said, eyes are closed. So the, the moment the mind always works with the location and the time, and it overlaps, superimposes itself on the pure consciousness. Because why? Because it has to find the location and the time. So location is the eyes. Eyes are closed. Then I give you another location. Look at the look at the neck joint. Oh, I gave another location. Consciousness is one. Canvas is one, my friends. Can I see that? Can I discern the overlapping? Yes. My experience is sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Oh, that is also taking place in the mind of a local object. And that object is the neck joint. What is after that? Let me remove this. How do you remove? By discernment. What is that discernment? So you move deeper from the sensation, comfort, and steadiness you find the space. Space is awareness. Awareness is space. You found the canvas. It is so easy for a seeker. Again, I'm adding. So you are done. No, no, no. But mind is keep, keeps on jumping. That is why I said, mind, we have to be a seeker. That if the mind is jumping on the different thoughts, feeling, past and memories, I discern again. I separate them in my mind. I cannot separate physically. So separate it mentally, suppose a thought comes, you know, I have a pain in the knee. So knee is an object, pain is an object, experienced by the mind with the thought and the feeling. You see the objects, you are discerning. The mind has become local. Without consciousness, the mind cannot become local. So you, you are aware of the consciousness and the pain at a distance. That is one. There are hundreds of ways. Our masters have coined, and that is what I used to say, be carefree. So you're not doing anything carefree. Through the knowledge, you discern. What do you discern? You discern the objects of the painting from the canvas, if I say so. Canvas, pure consciousness. Paintings, they have multiple objects, people, things, events, feeling, sensation. But why do I feel it? It is because of the secondary consciousness. Where is the secondary consciousness? Is the mind. 
the mind divides and perceives. Mind divides, I am here, you are there, but behind there is only one canvas. Uh -huh. Look at it. So from there, the masters have coined a simple concept or a principle. If the mind recognizes any object of the name in the form, it belongs to the word, it belongs to the fourth stage, it belongs to the painting. But behind that, there is one canvas, it is pure consciousness. If I see the movie on a television, it is the painting on the canvas, the rules are being, movement is there, the fight is there, but nothing happens to the screen, the TV screen, nothing happens to the canvas. What do you mean? Yes. How to know it? Discern it. Can you discern it physically? No. You have to discern it mentally through your awareness. So many thoughts are coming and going. So I do not control them. I do not suppress them. I do not fight with them. Why? How can you stop a movie you are watching on a television by directly hitting the TV? Do you see that? So you discern from all the contents of the mind, that mind loses its imaginary status. What happens? What is left? I see the screen. I see that consciousness. Are you a seeker? You will instantly recognize is the secondary consciousness causing trouble, causing lot of thoughts, makes me lazy, moves the mind, moves the body, makes it fidgeting, or holding the body with the pressure. They all are the working of the mind, the mental consciousness, the secondary consciousness, but this cannot work, function, recognize without the pure consciousness. We simply cannot work. You can't see the way without water, but still we say, no, 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 I see the wave. Wave cannot exist, does not exist without water. We as a different people do not exist, that is the truth. I told you, the painter visualized the color of a cloth on a particular area. Same way the movie flows on a television. Screen, nothing happens to the screen, nothing happens to the canvas. Nothing happens to that consciousness which borrows itself, lends its consciousness to the mind.
one has to contemplate and reflect again and again and again. I told you knowledge is realized in stages. You are a qualified seeker. The seeker is one who instantly discerns who the hell I am to give you a label that you are a seeker. You have everything. You know whether you are or not. So the moment the mind is a thought, thought is an object, object, perception of an object divides on the painting. Here is Stephen, here is Weibel, here is Brandy. Okay, difference. Secondary consciousness. Overlapping. That is what Buddha said. Not to focus on the breath. The moment you focus, you are gone. At least in this lifetime, focusing on the breath will not help you to reach to that state. Focus means an effort. So you are aware of the breath. So you see how we jump into the canvas. You are watching a movie. Play is going on. At the same time, you can also become aware of the TV screen. You need not to make any effort. You need not to close down. Because everything is appearing on the TV screen. Without the TV screen, movie cannot. Who creates the movie, the secondary consciousness? What is that imaginary? What is this mind? Oh. So the mind is playing and running with the movie. That is what we call life and living. Nothing happens to that screen canvas, whether you are living your mental life with a stress or a pleasure or a rich. You are a billionaire or you have only a few hundred dollars. This is all a part of the movie. Nothing happens William is committing a crime on the TV screen. Nothing happens to the TV screen. Nothing happens to the canvas. That canvas is the pure consciousness. So what is that impure? That is the secondary consciousness. The mind lends its consciousness and divides and perceives the world. You are just watching, feeling, discerning. That's why it's a known practice. And the moment there is a forgetfulness, there is a laziness, there is a fidgeting of the body, and the mind will say, what a crazy stuff I'm listening. Non-seeker's mind finds this craziness. So from there, a simple principle has come. What is that? Move from the false to the truth. Asatu ma satu So as a qualified seeker, you discern the false. What is false? 
the mind has created an imaginary consciousness through which it looks at the world and the reality. Oh, that is so. So I'm not different from Stephen Brandy Sam. Yes, you are not. It is so mind is overlapping over the real consciousness. Look at it. Is are you able to discern? Yes, obviously, today, at this moment, and after that, you live the life of a seeker 24 by 7. You are into that state of mindfulness. When? All the time. Where? In all the locations. In all relations. In all events and situations. That is what happens in movie, from the start to the finish. Moments of pleasure, pain, sorrow, grief, happiness, richness, poverty, everything happens in that movie. So we recognize, discern, Realize that is the true essence of the mantra Asatoma Satagamaya. Moving from false to the truth. What is false? After all, in the painting of your cloth, imaginary location but that imaginary location is nothing but the canvas so it means whatever is changing felt and experienced by the mind i have not to move there just stay where you are the way TV screen stays where it is. To discern the movement is not happening factually in the TV. Consciousness, the real self, is not at all moving. That discernment is asatoma asatoma. Oh, uh, he says, oh, no, I know the meaning. Then what? It doesn't work. Tamasoma jyotirugamaya. Tamaso, ignorance. What is ignorance? Ignorance is this overlapping. Ignorance is that we find we are the secondary consciousness. We are the experience. We are the experiencer. Who is that mind? You discern any object in the mind. You don't fight. You don't struggle. You simply discern. Here is an every thousand. Here is mine. That is discernment. We apply it every time. Here are my eyes. Here are my ears. But this discernment is the discernment between one falls from the other, one part from the other. But what we are discerning? The real from the unreal. 
The unreal is constantly changing. It is a part, it is a product, it is a process. When you don't see the part, process, product, you are already there. I recognize I'm a part of the painting and the canvas of consciousness. Oh, that is what I have been recognizing. That is what the false is. So, saying of the Upanishad, Asatoma Satagamaya, is not so easy. To say it, it's very easy. Claiming that I know is very easy. I have understood who understands the mind, who realizes after discernment. Mrityuramamritangamaya I just, it just came to my mind, this mantra, mortality, immortality. In a horror, in a thrill, in an action movie, many people die. Nothing happens to the TV screen. TV screen doesn't die. Consciousness never dies. So what the Master is saying, moving from the mortality to immortality. What is that moving? Is it the discernment? Moving from the painting on the surface and the fourth stage to the first stage. Can you separate them physically? No. Can you separate them mentally? Yes. That is the beauty of the journey. Here, in a mode of non-practice, that knowledge is re received, retained, realized. We are one real self of the nature of peace, happiness, love. Shanti 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 Bring your awareness on the right hand, your awareness on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences. Bring the hands down. We will share our... Uh, 
experiences and if you have any question we'll take up that so how are you Stephen ah I'm, I'm good, good. Um, um thank, thank you, you. Um, um very, very deep, deep lesson, lesson. Uh, uh, as, as soon as you said, said close, close your eyes, eyes for the meditation, meditation I, I, I felt this just immediately into, into my heart, heart center, center. Um, um, similar, similar to, to the, you know, the, the, the third, the third after the Niyasa on, on Mondays and Thursdays. Thursdays. Um, um, but, but, but when, when I got, got to the heart, heart center today, today it, was it was just, it was just a dark, empty space. Um, and, and, and then, then I, said, I said, all of a sudden, it came, came to my mind, mind which, which, which stay with me on this one. one. I, I said, oh, am I supposed, supposed to see the triangle? Am I supposed, supposed to see the mother or whatever it is? And instantly said, that's, that's the mind, mind and, and it, it dissolved. dissolved. And, and I, went I went back to my dark space. space. So, so I was, I was like, like, okay, this is, is and again, going contemplating and reflecting on your lesson. I said, this is what the, 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 the secondary consciousness is doing. This is my mind. I, 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 I think I got this. And then all of a sudden, the dark space turns back into a blank canvas. And I'm like, okay, mind. And as soon as I recognized the mind, it went back away and I fell into this dark, dark space again. But that went on for you know, back and forth that fight until the mind finally shut up and I stayed in this dark space. So it was great. Yes, yes. That's a beautiful example, the way you, he explained, the beautiful example of a discernment. I have to separate the secondary from the pure consciousness. Secondary consciousness constantly moving, creating an object, returning to an object, creating different experiences of pain and pleasure. So ultimately we land up in the primary or pure consciousness. So that's a wonderful. How are you, Sam? Meeting after a long time. Yes, yeah, hello. hello. Uh, it, it was, was uh, a very, very helpful, helpful lesson. lesson. Very helpful, very helpful lesson, lesson very, very helpful, helpful metaphor, metaphor. Um, much, much needed. needed. Much needed. <clears throat> you see this metaphor in a metaphor. So do you instantly become aware the moment you see your dad or mom or honey or a friend? Okay. And the metaphor reminds you or you give a label to a person, honey, wife, friend, etc., etc., or the moment you see any object. It's a discernment. The moment you see the wave, do you see the water also? So that is what our masters are talking about, the right perception. How are you, Waveho? Uh, sir, I'm good. good. Yeah, peaceful. peaceful. Just, Just a doubt, sir. Uh, <coughs> is self-consciousness is different from the consciousness, consciousness or it is an object, object of mind? mind? Real self, is canvas different from the paintings that you have painted? Definitely it is different. It has nothing to do with any canvas, has nothing to do with any painting of the people and the trees and the mountains. Simple answer, that whether you say real self or whether you say pure consciousness, they both are same. Whether you say Satchidanand, it is simply a canvas. So on that canvas, there is a superimposition. So first superimposition is causal. Second superimposition is mind. That mind is the secondary consciousness. That mind is the secondary cloth. So with that mental consciousness, you visualize you are web hub. But the pure consciousness has no difference. Got it? Yes, 
Very good. How are you, Brandy? I'm fine, thank you. Um, my meditation, same as Sam, was much needed this morning. Um, I had a lot of secondary consciousness interference before I came in. Uh, it went away. It just went away. I just, you know, I didn't even have to wrestle with it. Like Stephen kind of did today. Um, so deep and it's peaceful. It's nice. Deep and peaceful. I'm very happy. You know, when you start using, you all start using, oh, it's a secondary consciousness. I have a stress. No, it's a secondary consciousness. It's imaginary. It's a, I visualized it. So I'm visualizing the stress and the stress will go away. Provided I discern, provided I'm a seeker, conditional is there. I'm putting a condition. Master does not put a condition. Otherwise, why I'm putting a condition? Otherwise, look at this crazy guy. He doesn't understand my stress. You don't understand your that this stress is imaginary. So that is why I'm putting a condition. You are a qualified seeker. You are there. How are you, Kate? Good morning, Good morning everybody. everybody. Namaste. Namaste. I'm, I'm very, 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 very blessed, blessed to be here. here. Feeling, um, uh, uh, just, just very, very uh, uh, lovely, lovely awareness. Very lovely awareness. And, and me, just the, the uh, it's, uh, how, how much, much, how often, often I forget. forget. <laughs> how often you forget. <laughs> Very good. Very good. How often you forget. So I will stay there. How are you, Samir? <laughs> Sir, uh, I was lying down and uh, I was listening to what you were saying. And uh, I was totally into your talk. What you were telling, yeah. what you were speaking, I was enjoying. I was not uh, bothered about what is going on in my mind. What is there in my mind? Only I was listening to your talk. And I was little bit, uh, many times I was happy. In after a few minutes, a happiness, a feeling of happiness also came in my mind. Listening, listening, and just listening to what you were saying. That was the... Yes, listening is one. Listening is one. And then if the mind begins reflecting, you're only listening and you are absorbed into the listening, the reflection starts. <clears throat> Who you are, a guy asked, You see, so he was uh, in a casual clause. So, so who you are? You need not to ask an advocate wearing a black suit and a white shirt. You recognize him and her as an advocate, as a lawyer. But behind that, he is a human being. Another superimposition. Behind that, behind that being a human, human being is just the shape and the form is organized intelligently by the same consciousness. In this example, the, on the same canvas, one is wearing a black shirt with white and you know, what is that necktie looking like an advocate? But that advocate is painted on the canvas, visualized by the mind coming from the causal body, but it is the same consciousness. So you start living day to day, day to day. The entire world is nothing but a painted painting by the existence. You, you say your dad is a dad. I'm not saying that you stop saying. It's a movie. So you play your role. But 
now that I is identified with the pure consciousness or the canvas, not with the secondary consciousness, with the label, different names and the forms, and you are there. 